Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's a slightly different one. It's not a tutorial. Instead, it's just me giving 10 tips on how I believe you can do well in a game jam. So these are just 10 tips and tricks for beginners going into their first game jam or second or whatever, to be honest. Just 10 tips which have helped me. So let's get straight into it. So number one, I've got know who you're working with before it starts. So i.e. if you're on your own or if you're in a team. And if you are working in a team, make sure that everyone knows what they're doing. So give everyone a specific role i.e. you're a coder, your friend is an artist, someone else is 3D modeler or 2D modeler or whatever, but just give everyone a specific role so that you all know what you're doing so you can all focus on that one particular task in hand. And number two, I've got think out your idea thoroughly. So once the theme is released, I like to spend at least 30 minutes thinking of the idea and thinking it through in some detail. And I find writing it down in a notepad helps me. So instead of writing on my PC or just thinking it in my head, I find that writing it down in a notebook really solidifies the idea for me in my head and just helps me think it out a lot better. So yeah, spend at least 30 minutes, I'd say, thinking of a really good idea and putting it, some detail into it. And I'd say as well, go through different ideas. Don't just think of one and stick with it. Go, I usually go through about five to 10 different ideas and I pick one I really like and go into more detail on that. So number three, I've got be prepared. So know what you want to do, what game you want to make and how you want it to play out. So sometimes creating a rough timetable for you to follow can help improve your productivity as you won't be stuck on what to do next. So if either in the same time if you think of the idea or just after you've thought of the idea, if you create a, a rough timetable, so let's say it's over two days, let's say on day one you want to do this, day two you want to do that, and in day one, over the first three hours you want to do this, then you want to do that, and then and just stuff like that, so you, you know what you want to do. And also with a timetable it's good because then if you're ahead of your schedule, then you know you have more spare time to do other stuff that you want to do, you don't need to rush as much, or maybe you can add in more details at the end but just make sure that you think it through so you're not stuck on what you want to do next or what you want to add next. Because if you get everything done that you've written down, you're like, okay, so this is what I wanted to make. This is the game I wanted and I now have it. If I, I have some time left over, I can add some more. Or if you haven't got time left over, you're not gonna be disappointed or anything because this is the exact game you wanted to do and you have time to submit it. And number four I've got, don't just limit yourself to your own assets and having to make everything in the time. So unless the specific game drum rules say you have to, just don't believe you can only use your own assets, especially if you're new to game development and can't make your own assets in the time for the deadline. So there are plenty of free ones out there for you to use, so assets, textures, materials, 3D models, anything like that. And I've made a video highlighting some of these great websites in the description and at the end of the video. So especially if you, like, you don't have time to make your own stuff or you don't want to, because you don't know how and it won't be as good. Just go online, get some free ones. If you need to credit them, make sure you credit them in your game or if you don't need to. It's still nice to, but obviously you don't have to. But if they say you can't use it commercially, then obviously don't use it. And again, I'll go into more detail in this in the video. And also again, unless the game jam says you can't, you can use assets you've already made previously. You don't have to make everything in the time of the game jam itself. Again, make sure that you check with the rules of the game jam you're doing. And so number five, I've got spend as much time on it as you can without overworking yourself and burning yourself out. So obviously you're on a tight deadline, so you want to work as hard as you can on this. But if you're just working for the sake of working and then not actually progressing, then it's time to take a break and come back to it when you feel better. Because sometimes an hour, or, an hour or a couple hours break can mean you do more than just 10 hours of solid work. Because it's like I say, if you're just working for the sake of working because you want to, to feel like you're progressing, and then you get tired, you get lazy, it's either you're not going to do as much work, or if you do, it's just not going to be as good as it can be. So in short, just don't let it take over your life. If you have something you need to do, go do it. Like if you've got work or college or uni or anything, go do that. Obviously prioritise that and then come back, make sure to have a bit of free time as well, but also make sure you spend time on the game as well. And number six, I've just got to keep it simple. So especially if you're new to all of this, just stick to a nice 2D game. But if you feel you'd find it easier to do 3D or you feel capable of doing 3D, then go for it. But even graphics, length of the game, the story, just keep it short and simple because it's a lot better to make a short, simple game and have it submitted than try and make a really big or over complex game with a really big long story or anything but then not have time to get it finished and not submit it. And you people realise it's an indie game jam so you don't need to go make out the best game 
anyone's ever seen, like a AAA. Everyone's working the same deadline, same amount of time, so no one's expecting a, an amazing game. So basically, in short, just keep it simple. For number seven, I've got audio, because audio is very important. So make sure you A, have audio, and B, have good audio, because audio makes the game complete, and when it's missing or doesn't match what's happening, it's very noticeable and can have a major negative impact on your game as a whole and how it's perceived and the, and the gameplay and everything. So if you're playing a game and there's no audio, you're gonna notice it. Or let, let's say you're watching a film and there's no audio at all. It's very noticeable and you don't wanna watch, you don't wanna carry on watching, or in this instance, you don't wanna carry on playing because it does just have that big of an impact. So audio is very important. So you wanna make sure that you have audio and you wanna make sure that the audio is good. But if you can't get amazing audio, that's fine, because again, it's a game jam. But make sure you have some rather than none. And a good website for free audio is freesound.org, which I use very often, as well as making some of my own audio. So again, check the description for a video that I've made on the great free textures, audio, 3D models, and much more. So that'll be in the description at the end of the video. Now for number eight, I've got just test, test, test. Make sure that you test it through thoroughly. Once it's submitted and the deadline is passed, you can't re-upload a bug fix. So before submitting and even packaging and exporting your game, make, sh make sure to thoroughly test, test, test your game through. If something doesn't work, now is the best time to notice it and to fix it before it's too late and people play your broken game. Because if you open up the game and you can't move, obviously that's, you'll have noticed that before, but these are kind of things that you kind of overlook when you're making the game because you're sp you spend so much time focusing on everything else and all the little details that something very plain and simple you just forget but you need to fix, otherwise either people won't be able to play your game or it just won't be good at all. So testing is one of the most important parts and it might even help to get a friend or a family member to test through your game as well as they have a complete open mind about what's going on. They don't know anything about your game. So if they go in and play it, they'll probably be more likely to spot bugs that a normal player would find after not playing it before. And for nine, I've got make sure you know how to upload your game. So make sure you have all the correct files in the folder you're uploading not just the executable file, as the game needs all of the other files to run too. So you'll probably also need to zip the folder depending on what website you're uploading to. So you do this by simply just right clicking the folder, going to send to, and then compress file. And again, yeah, make sure you know exactly what you're doing. So I remember the first time I did a game jam, it was also the first time I uploaded a game to Itch.io. So I had no idea what I was doing. So I luckily put it up about an hour or two before the deadline ended. And then I got my family to download it as well and we saw that I hadn't put everything in that I needed to, so luckily I could re-upload my game. Um, and that changed in the submissions as well, so that it fixed so people could play it. But yeah, make sure that you know how you need to upload it, know what you're uploading, and upload the right stuff, as well as everything you need. And if you want a video on how to upload to Itch.io, how to export and package a game from Unreal, anything like that, leave a comment down below, and if people want to see it, then I'll make a video on it sometime in the future. And 10, I've just got to finally just take care of yourself and have fun. Because just remember, Game Jam is meant for you to have fun and it's for the experience. So to remember to actually eat enough, drink enough water, keep active, as you'll be sitting down more, and most importantly, sleep. Now, this may sound straightforward, like you don't need to be told this, but you'll be surprised how quickly you can just forget to do all this stuff, especially when you're just focused in on making the game. You don't, you forget about everything else pretty much. And so you'll probably want to stay up late and just work, work, work. But remember, when you lack sleep, food and water, you'll just lose concentration and it'll have an impact on your game. Because you won't be concentrated, you'll be feeling lazy, tired, and you just won't want to work. Or if you do, it just won't be up to your normal standard or as good as it can be. So that's my 10 tips and tricks for beginners getting into a game jam, or anyone really. Just my 10 tips on a game jam and how you can try and do your best. So good luck to anyone starting a game jam. Hope you do well. And remember to just have fun with it. And so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.